I'm going to take you through many of the basic rules of derivatives. A lot of these you just need to have memorized. It's going to make your life so much easier. Let's go ahead and start with some that have powers. I'm actually just starting with a constant. So if I were to take the derivative of any constant, so d dx of a constant, we could also write this using prime notation. So constant, this would be the derivative, is equal to zero. So for example, if I had the derivative of 5, that would be equal to 0. So the derivative of any constant. If I moved on to the derivative of just a variable to the first power, notice that the variable of differentiation, d dx, matches the x, so it's got to be the same variable there. This is equal to 1. Next we've got the power rule, so d dx of x to the n. That power rule says to bring the power out in front, n, and then x to to the reduce that power by 1, n minus 1. So this looks like if I had x to the fourth power, say, it would be the 4 comes out in front, x, and then the new power is 4 minus 1, or 3. Next, we've got the derivative of a radical. So let's do d dx of the square root of x. Well, I'm going to use a power rule on this one as well. So I'm going to rewrite this. Let me use prime notation instead as x to the 1 half power, and then we'll use prime notation. Let's get just a little bit more room here, and then we'll finish this one off. So for this one, I can use now a power rule. So to do our power rule, I bring the 1 half out in front, and then I get x to the 1 half minus 1. So that's going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half, which I can rewrite as 1 over 2. That 1, the negative 1 half puts the x in the denominator with a positive 1 half power. 1 over 2 radical x. Now you could stop here or you could rationalize this. So if I rationalize this one, it would be radical x over radical x that I'm multiplying it through by, and I end up with radical x over 2 radical x squared, which is finally, oh my goodness, so many steps, radical x over 2 x. So either of these forms is fine. So it's a good one to have memorized, not maybe as important as the others or as the next ones I'm going to show you. Let's look at some really important trig derivatives. Next, we're going to do the derivative of some trig functions. Now, I'm going to go through all six of the trig functions. I strongly recommend that you just have these memorized, make some flashcards, whatever you need to do. These come up a lot. Starting with the derivative of sine, that one is equal to cosine. If I look next at the derivative of cosine, so the derivative of cosine x is equal to negative sine of x. Now, I've got this memorized because I I know that the negative sign goes with the answer sign of x. So however you're able to memorize this, the negative goes with the answer sine of x. Let's do another one. So let's do tangent next. So d dx of tangent x is equal to secant squared of x. Now I know that these two tangent and secant go together in the Pythagorean identity, so that's how I have these memorized, how they're grouped together. That might not be helpful to you, but hopefully it is. So those two do go together in the Pythagorean identities. Moving on to the other three, let's go ahead and start with the derivative of cosecant. So the derivative of cosecant x is equal to negative cosecant x cotangent x. Again, you just want to have these memorized. And then the derivative of secant. So the derivative of secant x is equal to, similar to the one up above, secant x times tangent x. And finally, the derivative of uh, cotangent. So the derivative of cotangent of x is equal to negative cosecant squared. Now again, these match up similar to the Pythagorean identities. Cosecant and cotangent go together, secant and tangent go together. You'll also notice that the negative sign only shows up with the cosecants. 
similar to how our negative sign showed up with the sign. So there's a few little tricks to memorizing these, but really you just need to have them memorized. Next, let's look at exponentials and logs. I'm going to show you three exponentials and log derivatives. So we're going to go ahead and take a look first at the derivative of e to the x, which is my very favorite derivative because it is just itself e to the x. Next, let's look at the derivative of the natural log of x. So the derivative of the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. From this one, we can also get to the derivative of log of any base. So I'll just do log base b of x. Before I put the answer here, let's work through this one. I'm going to do a change of base formula. So I'm going to rewrite this as the derivative of log base b of x using my change of base formula becomes the natural log of x over the natural log of b. I only need to differentiate what's dependent on x. So I can actually bring this, I can think of it as a 1 over natural log of b all the way out in front. So 1 over the natural log of b times the derivative d dx of natural log of x. As I take this derivative, I get 1 over the natural log of b times 1 over x. This is going to give me my answer. So my answer here is going to be 1 over the natural log of b times X. So another one to memorize. I have this one memorized because it's actually really similar to the derivative of the natural log of x. I think of this natural log b as a fudge factor. So the derivative of a log is 1 over x. If it's a different base, I'm going to have that fudge factor of natural log b. Now there are so many other things to learn in terms of derivatives. I'm going to show you the product rule next. So take a look at my next video, but I've got lots of other videos videos to help you through your Calc 1 material. You've got this. Keep practicing. Keep memorizing. Thanks so much for watching.